I swear on a stack of Bibles. I literally do. I speak to you um, with this little, uh, um, oh, it's like an easel that I rest my camera on and it's literally stacked on um, some are quads, but almost all are Bibles. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six uh, Bibles. So I'm literally testifying to you or talking to you or just uh, sharing my feelings with you on a stack of Bibles. I, I just thought of that uh, today. Um, so interesting thing. Okay, we're in Utah. Um, Sue and I drove from uh, our home in in uh, the Morgan Valley, east of uh, Ogden, to St. George. And we drove Friday for to go to a Tuacon performance of uh, School of Rock. And then we on Friday night and then and then spend the night and then Saturday evening we were going to watch uh, The Count of Monte Cristo which I think is one of the greatest stories ever. Um, I, I love revenge <laughs> uh, of stories of revenge. <laughs> um, I know it's one of my weaknesses. I'm working on it. Not too hard. But it's, it's, you know, Alexander Dumas, Three Musketeers, it's, it's a fantastic story. Um, the, uh, I've, read, I've read the book, okay, and it's, it's just fantastic. And there's a scene in there in the book. I don't know if it's in, in there's been two or three movies of it. Uh, and I was so anxious to see the play, and I'll explain that in a minute. But just this one scene in the book, came, uh, I've, I've always thought of it, but I think it's the banker. And um, Alexander, not Alexander. Um, oh, boy, the name. Let's say the Count, right, at this point. Edmond Dante, is it? Anyway, he's... He's now the Count of Monte Cristo, not Sir, not not Edmond Dante. I think that's the right name. I could be wrong. Anyway, it's been a while. Um, I would have known had we been able to see the play, and I'll get to that in a minute. But the banker gets very frustrated and mad and angry at the Count, and he goes to throw the glove. And the Count goes, you don't need to throw it. I consider it thrown. And I love that because so much of what we do, we don't have to actually act it out. People either know or they feel. And so um, I, I think that's a, a good way that we should be is save people from acting things out and just say, I know you're angry and I know you're about to do this. I consider that you did it and now you don't need to do it. It's, it's so awesome. And, and to have somebody write that and put it in a story, mm, so good. Okay, so when we got down... Um, those of you that have made that drive and know the area, and I know many of you don't, and I apologize for making this kind of a, a local story, but we've been experiencing the California fire smoke for a few days in Utah, and it's bad, it's bad. But as we drove south on Friday, I can't remember exactly, maybe somewhere south of Fillmore, maybe Beaver or Parowan or somewhere like that, before Cedar City, there was no smoke. It was beautiful. And we had a wonderful evening, School of Rock. If you can get down there and see these young kids perform, and the guy that plays Jack Black is brilliant. It's awesome. 
and stick it to the man is just so, such a good message for today, for this day and age. But anyway, uh, great, a great performance and a great show. So the next, so we went up to Zion's and did some things Saturday and then because uh, the performances aren't till evening, late evening. Well, about quarter to nine is when the show actually starts. So you're there till midnight, right? So we get there and we see all these cars coming out and you get that sick feeling like, <laughs> and they had canceled it because the smoke had moved in. <laughs> so you, you know, get a, Motel for a couple of nights, the cost, you know, somebody to watch the puppies. <laughs> you bought the tickets a long time ago and all these things. And then plans change. A minor, a minor, minor, very minor uh, setback, if you will. A disappointment, just a little disappointment. But, but here's the interesting thing with this. Have you noticed, I have, but have you noticed in the last few years, there's more and more of, of the things that just automatically happened and there were no real, you know, I mean, every all of us have, you know, a blown tire on a trip or things like that. I'm, I'm not, I, I know those things happen or even a serious accident, you know, I know those things happen. But I'm saying overall, you know, flights, um, Travel, uh, games, jobs, schooling, everything just kind of clicked. In the last few years, and particularly the last two years, year and a half, things are in disarray. And you can never really count on anything anymore other than Jesus. You can count on him. <laughs> And that's where we're going to go with this discussion. Um, it, it is so amazing to me how many times, like it used to be, you know, you just had an inkling to go to the temple. You really didn't have to give much thought to it. Where we lived, okay? I get it. I know that many of you live where it had to be a huge plan. But if you lived in Zion, ah, just kidding. <laughs> the New Jerusalem. No, I'm seriously, guys. I'm not, I don't want to get there right now. I, I just like to trigger some people. But, but if you lived up and down, let's say, the Wasatch Front, you could go to a temple virtually any time. And very seldom, you know, you'd go, oh, the temple's closed. Dang it. You know, oh, well, I'll go up to that one. You know, that that's the kind of thing that had been for years. And sessions on the half hour or 20 minutes in some cases, you, you know. And then if it was the worst was, oh, I missed it. I got to wait an hour. You know, that was the worst case scenario. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's what we were used to. Not anymore. Appointments. Got to, got to see if there's any special things that you need to do. Make sure you get, have your clothing most times, you know, in, in the temples that you used to not have to worry about that. Um, you you kind of have to pay attention to what the new rules and regulations are, right? Um, just simple things now, going to different places, we, we kind of have to be on our game. My my opinion on this is this is going to escalate. And the California fires are proof in the pudding. I just Googled this. I didn't duck, duck, go it. I Googled it. And I just went, the top fires. When did the top fires happen in California? The, the worst, the largest fires. Google it. Just Google top 20 fires in California. The top 20, nine, the first nine, like nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, from the year 
2017 to now. The top nine, the top nine in three and a half, four years. And the biggest two last year and the current one is number two now. It, it could exceed last year. Last year was number one. This year's number two, it, it, and it's still burning. And it has an effect on a huge population of people. Of course, the massive destruction and loss of, of where it actually takes place. And then those of us that are inconvenienced and, you know, just things just aren't the same. And who knows the long-term effects of all this kind of smoke in the air. So you could get political about it and say, gosh, you know, these environmentalists that, that you know, took over California, a lot of good it did them. And you could, you could get into it that way. Um, but we, in my opinion, we literally are seeing the signs of the times of the end, the, 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 the end of times of wickedness. And there is a burning, a literal burning going on. Now, I'm not talking about the burning of the wicked or the destruction of the wicked. Uh, that will come. But I am talking about things just aren't how they were. And to have these top fires in the last few years, nine of the top, within three years, the top nine fires in California within three or four years, 2017, which is you know that was that was an interesting year because we had the the, the Virgo sign you know Ma, uh, uh, Revelation 12 that happened that year so it was really good so lots of things happening I'm 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 pumped <laughs> um, I'm not pumped for the destruction of personal property of people and and the 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 death and the the carnage that that happens with this but what i am excited about is is seeing prophecy fulfilled and and really watching that's what we are right i know a few of you were concerned about uh when when the shirts and hats were coming and i think i got i got a box on my doorstep while we were gone uh, of some hats, uh, some more hats I ordered, uh, cow merchandise, if you will. Now look, nobody's making any money on this and it's not my deal. It's a young couple, I think they're in California, they're awesome. Talked to them a couple of times and they wanted to do this and I said, I'll put it out there and if people wanna do it, that's that's great. It's kind of fun to, to wear that. You get You get some questions once in a while. So it gives you an opportunity, right? But I want everybody to know that this isn't my thing, right? I'm not, I just put it there in case. And I don't know when the next run will be. I, they, they don't, it's not just like an open thing to do. So I think until I hear from them, we'll just let it, you know, if, if you got it, great. So everybody should have got this last one. It takes some time, you know, we're, we're a little, you know, kind of antsy sometimes on our stuff, but it's great. And a little, you know, I, I think it's just kind of fun to have that, that little bit of a community. Okay, so this is the cool thing. Um, I, I said last week, I think it was, that I want to cover some verses that aren't covered in a lot of the Come Follow Me's. Well, how am I supposed to know? I don't have time. You don't have time to listen. So you pick one or two come follow me's and you listen to them. And I picked one and it was uh, follow him with um, John, by the way, and Hank Smith. And I can't remember who their guest was, but he's really good. And he covered some awesome things, but there's some scriptures they didn't cover. And I'm not going to be critical. I'm going to try to be nicer that way. Um, because I went to the temple last week, <laughs> so I'm going to be nice. <laughs> um, but these, they didn't even, 
they didn't even scratch these verses. But there's so much in section 88. There is so, so much, and it is so wonderful. You know, all this, all the scriptures about light, you know, in section 84, 88, and 93 are all just the, the, this, this doctrine of the light of Christ and the power, you know, that, that lights our world, light, light enlightens our understanding, all these wonderful things. And they covered some amazing things, particularly about the temple and, and all the things that, that we learn uh, that were revealed to the prophet Joseph in section 84 that, that were then manifest as the temple was, was built in Kirtland. And those uh, great understandings were in Kirtland, right? Okay. Um, all right. Now, so, so these are, I'm going to read some verses here that I think are so good. We're actually going to talk about the rapture, uh, the, the Mormon version of the rapture, um, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint version of the rapture uh, is spelled out probably the best in section 88. So um, where should we start here? Where should we start? Uh, let's start in verse 85, verse 85. And there's that that their souls may escape the wrath of God. Let's start in 84. Therefore tarry ye and labor diligently that ye may be perf um, perfected in your ministry to go forth among the Gentiles for the last time. Now that's really cool because that ties directly within Jacob 5, the end of Jacob 5, where the Lord of the vineyard said, let's do it one last time. And that's what this is describing. So the last dispensation, Joseph Smith's the prophet of it. And one last time, among the Gentiles for the last time, as many as the mouth of the Lord shall name, to bind up the law and seal up the testimony and to prepare the saints for the hour of judgment, which is to come. <laughs> This is the separation of the wheat and the tares. And when it says bound, those, those bundles are bound and, and going to get burned. <clears throat> that their souls may escape the wrath of God. Now that's a little hint towards the rapture. Why would, your, why would you, and, and we learn in, the, in section 88 that the soul is the body and the spirit of man. So, the, so, so you, are you getting this? that their souls may escape the wrath of God. So this is where we get the idea, and, and it's explained a little bit further here. We'll cover those verses where there are these, um, nat say, natural disasters that are supposed to wake us up. And then, uh, so, so kind of the punishment of man, if you will, the, the things are gonna happen, and then it's God. Then it's God that's gonna do his work that the souls, that their souls may escape the wrath of God. So the soul is the body and the spirit, the physical body and the spiritual body together. So that's significant. The desolation of abomination, that their souls, the body may escape the desolation of abomination, which awaits the wicked both in this world and in the world to come. Awesome. Verily I say unto you, let those who are not the first elders continue in the vineyard until the mouth of the Lord shall call them from the, from their time for their time is not yet come. So you got to keep laboring the little guys, the guys that are working under the keys of the apostles. You have to still stay out there and work. Now there was quite a disruption uh, last year when the, when the, the COVID thing hit and all those missionaries brought home and they're all in their home country. You talk about an indication and a sign. Uh, that, that prepares your mind. The Lord very seldom just immediately does something without giving you some signs or types of things to happen. The Old Testament, the whole thing is a type of thing preparing for the Savior's earthly ministry. 
and and his 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 millennial ministry as well. There were types, and I could I could spend hours with you and me talking together about those types. My personal opinion is bringing them home was a type of what's going to happen in the very, in my opinion, near future when they're come home. It gets the mind prepared that, that, oh yeah, we did that before. They all came home, okay? So mouth of the Lord shall call them from their, for their time is not yet come. Their garments are not clean, are not clean from the blood of this generation. This is really interesting because this is a phrase that we hear in the temple, the blood of, the gen, of, of this generation. Um, Abide ye in the liberty wherewith ye are made free, entangle not yourself in sin. So our freedom is definitely attached to how obedient we are. And the lack of freedom is attached to how disobedient we are. And that's pretty simple. But let your hands be clean until the Lord comes. So much in the Book of Mormon is talking about when the Lord comes. Now, this could be referring to when he comes to the Kirtland Temple, okay? Which it probably does, but it probably means his second coming as well when, when he comes in his power and glory. Now, verse 87. This is when we get into the good stuff. Well, it's all good, but the stuff that I like. <laughs> For not many days hence, and the earth shall tremble and reel to and fro as a drunken man, and the sun shall hide its face and shall refuse to give light, and the moon shall be bathed in blood, and the stars shall become exceedingly angry and shall cast themselves down. We're talking about um, shooting stars, you know? We, we like to watch those. As a fig that falleth from off the fig tree. I always like it when, so, so this, this section is called uh, the olive branch, and then it talks about the fig tree. I love all that. I love all that. Um, this was, this was a, a letter or a revelation to kind of calm down the Missouri saints and, and let them know that everything's going to be okay. Um, and anyway... And, and then, okay, so, so then, and then after your testimony, the testimony of the missionaries, those out proclaiming, cometh wrath and indignation upon the people. Wow. So at some point, you have to, to just say, okay, you guys have done what you're supposed to do. Now let me take a shot at it. Um, that's God speaking, not me. Um. Now, this is where we can get into a couple of different things. Some people like to talk about the seven-year tribulation and in Daniel, breaking it down to two, three-and-a-half-year periods. And, and this, this scripture can be likened unto that where you have... Uh, seven years of tribulation. The first three and a half is kind of like, you know, how bad can man screw it up? And, and the earth's natural reaction, um, the natural reaction of sin in the world causing all kinds of issues. And that goes on for three and a half. And then the, the last three and a half years of tribulation is, is God. This could be uh, looked at that way. Um, you know, you do your testimony, you go out and do your thing. There's, there's going to be some signs, but then, then it's going to be my turn. Um, so that's one way to look at it. The, the other way to look at it is um, you know, basically you wash your hands and say, we've done all we can do, Heavenly Father. You know, give us that confirmation. And, and now, now you you take it from here. Sometimes it's what we have to do with, with children that we have, where we raise them, they become adults. Um, 
we're not perfect as parents or grandparents. We do what, you know, we do the best that we know how and helping them. And they're just stubborn and stupid and want to go down a different path. Or maybe we were that person that did that. And at some point as a parent or a grandparent, you just have to say, Heavenly Father, I, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm just going to pray for these kids because they have their agency, right? And you can't force them. And so then, then God does some things to them sometimes that <laughs> humbles them and gets them back um, because of some real trials that they've created. Um, now, that's not always the case, but sometimes it is. But that's how I look at this as a parent. Uh, I, that's how I see God in this situation, that he, he sends messengers. He gives us copies of scriptures that are easily accessed. He gives us technology, inspires men and women to create things so that we can study and learn. And we have temples dotting the earth and all of these things to help us and, and coax us, encourage us, and, and encourage us to, to, to embrace the blessings of the gospel. But then at some point, it's like, you don't want it? You gotta experience the consequences. So, so that's, that's what that's about. And after your testimony cometh wrath and indignation upon the people. And after your testimony cometh the testimony of earthquakes. Okay, so here it is. That shall cause groanings in the midst of her and men shall fall upon the ground and shall not be able to stand. These are major, major. So we had an 8.2 last week or week four in, in Alaska. I don't think it did anything and, uh, that, I, that I'm aware of. That's a pretty big earthquake. But you have those in major cities. You have, you 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 have those, and those that have gone through it. We had a missionary, um, uh, Elder Maldarizzi, in Italy, and he was right near the the earthquake that that really shook, um, kind of the northern part of Italy, um, not way north, but the upper two thirds, I guess, and really caused some damage and heartache there. Um, we're talking major earthquake that shall cause groanings in the midst of her and men shall fall upon the ground and shall not be able to stand. And also cometh the testimony of the voice of thunderings and the voice of lightnings and the voice of tempests and the voice of waves of the sea heaving themselves beyond their bounds and all things shall be in commotion. And that's what I was talking about earlier. You know, Things that you could just count on, you know, now you, you kind of have to plan. There could, things might not come out the way you were, were thinking. And I, my belief is, is that this will escalate. And I think I have the scriptures to prove that. All things shall be in commotion. You will not be able to count on anything but Jesus. And surely men's hearts shall fail them. Now, we're seeing this in pockets. This is going to be major. And I've been focusing mainly, mainly on Utah and California and all that. A lot of this, and particularly the abomination of desolation, is focused in, in Israel and in Jerusalem. And there was a huge fire just the other day between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem and it shut the road down. There was no way to go. Now think of that. Have, have we ever heard of such things happening? Um, all over, bizarre, bizarre things going on. A lot of it is because we know about it. You know, it'll happen in diverse places. That means different places. Well, the only way we would know that these things have happened is because of technology. We can instantly know. So that that is a specific prophecy about our day when it says diverse places. Because if you don't know it, it's like, it's like uh, what about Bob? Um, when he fakes the Dret syndrome, if he fakes it, then he doesn't have it. <laughs> if you, if you don't, 
hear about it, you don't know what happened, so it didn't really happen, right? <laughs> but if you instantly get information that it happened, you own it and you know it. And so earthquakes happen in diverse places, even in, in Alaska, out in the ocean somewhere. We knew about it, okay? Men's hearts shall fail them. Um, you can see that happen more and more. I think of this uh, recent uh, um, pandemic and the fear and men's hearts, and, and I should say mankind, men and women, their hearts failing them of, of just functioning and fear and you know, bubble wrapping themselves so that they don't get it, they don't give it. Bubble wrap your kid, bubble wrap yourself. Um, forget that you can't breathe, you know, but anyway. <sighs> Men's hearts shall fail them, for fear shall come upon all people. Fear. And the, me, that's a critical thing is the fear, the fear. And angels shall fly through the midst of heaven, crying with a loud voice, sounding the trump of God, saying, prepare ye, prepare ye, O inhabitants of the earth, for the judgment of our God is come. And I love this. Behold and lo, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. This is a direct reference to, the, to Matthew 25, the parable of the 10 virgins. This is so good. Prepare to go out and meet him. And immediately after that, Trump. There shall appear a great sign in heaven and all people shall see it together. I have no idea what that's going to be, but that will be amazing. And another angel shall sound to Trump saying, that great church, the mother of abominations, that made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. I would suggest looking up every single footnote in this verse. It's pretty interesting. I won't take the time to do it right now. Um, the wine of her fornications and that persecuteth the saints of God that shed their blood she who sitteth upon many waters and upon the isles, islands of the sea, behold, she is the, the tares of the earth. Here we go. The wheat and the tares. She is the tares of the earth. She is bound in bundles. So we read that earlier about binding uh, in, in uh, verse 84. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Bound in bundles. Her bands are made strong, no man can loose them. Therefore, she is all ready to be burned. <laughs> Tied, sealed, and delivered. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Um, and he shall sound his trump both long and loud, and all nations shall hear it. Now, here's a, here's a little bit of a debate in within the church. One is, is that we have to, to make a Zion society in order for Christ to, to feel like he can come. And the other is that Christ will destroy the wicked and then the society is created and, and Christ comes at the destruction of the wicked when he comes. So it's, it's like simultaneous. So in other words, you can't create this 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 uh, um, n n oh, I, just this um, the word is is escaping my mind right now but uh, the society of of beauty and love and all things in common you know that type of thing the city of Enoch type thing we can't create, or we have to create that before Christ can come. I'm kind of losing it here, but um, personally, I don't believe that. I think the wicked need to be destroyed before that can be created. So 
Um, yeah, that's, but, but, and, and I think that this, these scriptures verify that, that the wicked need to be burned and destroyed before, you know, this concept of, of um, a Shangri-La, that's not really what I'm trying to think of. The utopia, maybe that was the word I was looking for, a utopia type thing. Um, I really think that um, destruction has to happen to the wicked in order for that to happen. Um, Therefore she is ready to be burned and he shall sound the trump both long and loud and all nations shall hear it. That's significant. All nations shall hear it. And there shall be silence in heaven for the space of a half hour, of, of half an hour. Okay, so that's an interesting thing. We've heard a lot of um, thoughts on the half hour, and I, I like them all. I, I don't really subscribe to one or the other. Um, but I do find a reference um, that's actually in our scriptures to that silence. So if you look at the footnote A, silence, it sends you to, to Doctrine and Covenants 3812. And I, I think this is worth looking at because we've, we've heard of the half hour of silence as, as maybe it's the prophet um, not really revealing much, kind of letting us, you know, do our own thing. Um, the Lord not revealing or telling him not to say anything. But if we go to 38.12, listen to this. Which causeth silence to reign and all eternity is pained and the angels are waiting. <laughs> the great command to reap down the earth to gather the tares, boom, back what we were talking about, that they may be burned and behold, the enemy is combined. So maybe this half hour of silence is just these guys chomping at the bit, wanting to destroy the wicked of the earth. And it, you can feel it. It seems like it's going to happen at some point here. There's just, there's just this boiling point. We hear that word a lot in news and, you know, whatnot. There's a boiling point or it's a tinder box, you know, ready to go tinder, you know, just like like kindling and, and uh, uh, something that, that is um, um, uh, uh, combustible, like just like that, you know. We're looking at those situations. The Middle East is a tinder box, you know, we hear that a lot. Okay, so, so anyway, the space of a half hour. Now, there's a lot that feel like that at the opening of the seventh seal is when, and if you, you can go to Revelation 8, 1, and it talks about a half hour of silence. There's, there's some in the church who feel like we're not in the seventh seal, and some feel like we are. And if you, if you just kind of go along with the thousand year idea of a dispensation or not a dispensation but of a a seal is seven is, is a thousand years and so the opening of the the closing of the sixth seal and the opening of the seventh would be roughly around the year 2000 right so if that's the case and we have a half hour of silence some have calculated that half hour to be you know around 20 years when you when you look at a, a half hour compared to a thousand years is a, is a day. And so a half hour, it's about 20 years, a little over. So <clears throat> I don't know. I, I don't know. But when I hear things talked about, I go, hmm, yeah, that, that's interesting. That could make sense to me. Um, but I'm not ready to just snag it and hang on to it and say, this is it. Um, but we could have experienced that half hour of silence and maybe, maybe we're, you know, starting to see the effects with all these burnings and all these things going on. Okay. Now, and there should be silence in the heaven for a space of half hour, half, half an hour. And then listen to this. 
And immediately after shall the curtain of heaven be unfolded, as a scroll is unfolded after it is rolled up, and the face of the Lord shall be unveiled. Now, in my opinion, that hasn't happened yet. So I think we're still in that half hour of silence. But get ready, folks. I think, I think it's about soon. And now listen to this. And the saints, the saints that are upon the earth who are alive shall be quickened and be caught up to meet him. There's our rapture scripture. We, we adhere to the rapture because of that scripture, in my opinion. We'll be caught up. And I say we because that's my hope. Because I, okay, I've talked about this before. But in my opinion, this is, this is very similar to the, the three disciples of Christ in the Americas and John the Revelator. Um, who, whose bodies were quickened and changed, and they immediately were back on earth working. But they didn't have to worry about a lot of the stuff. They probably got this back, and they probably got their knees are okay, and their ankles okay, and their backs okay, and, and they might not have a weight problem, you know? And they're ready to just go to work. Um, so, um, this is, this is exciting stuff because this is, this is pretty unique. And it's, it's, if you're alive at the time, right after the half hour of silence, and then what does it say? Um, that, that, that heaven be unfolded as a scroll rolled right out. Um, and the face of the Lord shall be unveiled. Oh, and the saints that are alive on the earth who or, or the saints on the earth who are alive shall be quickened and, and be caught up to meet him. Now, this is just my opinion, but I think I think the resurrection doesn't happen for those people then. And they they're quickened and they they come back. They're caught up to meet him. OK, now let's go to let's go to um, first Thessalonians. Because this is this is where uh, you know other Christian denominations will get uh, the idea of the rapture, um, and, and we're in chapter four. Uh, uh, ba, 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 ba. Verse sixteen. For, uh, so First uh, Thessalonians four uh, sixteen. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, this is interesting because now I'll finish reading this. Then we which are alive, okay, and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. This is... This is Paul speaking, and, and he gets it exactly how Joseph Smith. But, but in the Doctrine and Covenants, it mentions those that are alive first, and then it mentions those that are dead, in, that are righteous, will, will come forth. This is just reversed. It talks about those that are dead um, going up. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with those others that are dead, and uh, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, most Christian denominations think that that's at that point, you know, you're caught up and you're in, you're in heaven with the angels and God. And, you know, and that's, that's an awesome thought. And I'm not going to argue or fight against that. What we're thinking is, as saints, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that take our covenant serious, um, is that, and if we're still alive, that we'll be caught up, quickened, terrestrialized, if you will, a terrestrial body, we'll come back down, we'll go to work with the Savior for a thousand years. So we'll, we will be with him, 
but in a terrestrial state, not a telestial state like we're in now. Um, and that's what the quickened is. I, I just love these. Verse 97, back to uh, section 88. And they who have slept in their graves shall come forth, for their graves shall be opened, and they also shall be caught up to meet him in the midst of the pillar of heaven. They are Christ, the first fruits. They who shall descend with him first. Descend. Come back to earth. See, this is, this is new enlightenment. And they who are on the earth and in their graves who are first caught up to meet him. And all this is by the voice of the sound, sounding of the trump of the angel of God. So, okay, I've gone on kind of too long on this, but I just, I, this is so exciting to, to study and read and contemplate. And, and uh, I don't like to see people suffer. I hope you don't think that. But, it, but these are exciting times. And in the whole eternal scheme of things, it's going to happen. And the wicked, the Lord will use the wicked to punish the wicked. He'll use the elements because they're under his command and they're totally obedient. Oh, there's one scripture I do have to read. That just, that just reminded me. The earth. This is, this is the way to make it to the celestial kingdom. This is it. This is it boiled down into one verse, verse 25 of section 88. And again, verily I say unto you, the earth abideth the law of the celestial kingdom. And here's how the earth did it. And here's how we can do it. So simple. For it filleth the measure of its creation, number one, and transgresseth not the law. That's it. That's all we need to do. Fill the measure of our, our creation and don't transgress the law. Uh, we do that. Celestial Canada. It's that easy. Love you all. Bye.